Don't know how closely you follow your Belarusian football, but this was a really good game recently. February 2015, this was played. FC Slutsk 2, Shakhtar Soligorsk 1. Shakhtar, Andy, have played Europa League football. They've actually played in the Champions League. They were leading in this game until very late on. They'd actually missed a penalty, right. and they were undone by two late goals from Slutsk. Unlucky. Quite a game, quite Unlucky. a comeback. That was a good comeback. You know the only thing about this game that doesn't fit? Uh, nobody watched it? Didn't happen. What? Didn't happen, despite the fact there were <laughs> reports off. on both clubs' websites. Didn't happen. This and one these here. Are genuine clubs? Yes. This one here didn't happen. I thought you were making these These names are called up ghost that. games. And they're part of a multi trillion dollar match fixing business. It's a step beyond match fixing right now. This is happening. It's, it's actually quite frightening. So, just before, so what people are doing are pretending these games are taking place yes. and allowing people to bet on the yes. result. And the games don't take place. Games don't take place. And you can't win because, of course, you can never actually come back to the game. Ah. Stuart Page um, is a friend of ours that's appeared on our radio programme down the years and rejoins us now. He, uh, it's, 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 Stuart, get, w what is the job you do? Because it's such a lengthy title, it's impossible for me to remember. <laughs> well, thanks um, very much, Richard and Andy, for uh, giving me some time to be able to talk about my favourite subject, cleaning up the beautiful game of football. Um, basically, I, I work around creating a heap of policies and looking to people across sports, governments, law enforcement to actually clean up the game of sport, to sport integrity, to give it back to the players and the fans. So that's what we're doing to try and um, get it clean, get it back, back, back to where, as you just said, the ghost game, a game that didn't happen, but yet millions of dollars were bet on a game that didn't happen and people believed it was happening. So, so you, I mean, the very fact you say clean up the game suggests there is a problem. Uh, last time we spoke on the radio, mm -hmm. you talked to us about this being a multi-billion dollar business, match fixing. Multi-trillion now? Is it getting worse to that degree? Look, it is getting worse. It was multi-billion. We know that with the illegal sports betting market, the very thing you talked about, the ghost game, uh, that it is really getting out of control. We know there are heavy amounts of money that have been um, laid down on games to be manipulated across the world. And with the advent of internet everywhere, games being um, made live everywhere, it's just getting worse and worse. And, it's, and you know what? The big thing about it, it's not a crime in some countries. This Stuart, is a global crime. Stuart, don't you just have an impossible job? Isn't it the fact that these guys will win in the end and there's nothing you can do about it? Good point, but I'm not going to give up. It's my game. I want it back. I yeah. want it for the fans. I also want it for the players. And, and there's no way we're going to give up on this because, you know, all we're saying is the beautiful game is a global game. So match fixing should be a global crime. It's, it's both a sport problem, it's a government problem, it's law enforcement problem, it's a whole range of it. It's a cyber crime problem. Stuart, you know, there's, there's currently a case, I think, going on in Holland um, uh, discussing match fixing. There has been previously in Spain. Is there a league in the world that isn't affected by the ability of fixers to arrange the outcome of matches? Premier League. Every league is wide open. Premier Every league part of included, sure. I would say there are some teams that are lower there. There are some players that don't get the same amount of money. Everybody is vulnerable to this. Wow. And that's what's scary about it, because it is a big problem. And look, just going back to the ghost games, the Belarusian Football Association said after that, hey, we're sorry, we're going to get the police to look at it. And unfortunately... The police can only look at it within their country. Yet, yeah, I I put money on it. Sorry about the pun. <laughs> that that, that the, the illegal website is outside Belarus. The money came from probably north somewhere in Northeast Asia, and there's no way those police, who I think are trying to do the right thing, won't be able to get across it. What's the end game, Stuart? Can I, can I speculate for a moment that at some point this blows? There's more than just us talking about it. That that maybe sponsors of a big European league somewhere don't want anything to do with the practice that would appear to be normal right now. Are, are we looking at a doomsday scenario where leagues could fold as a result? 
is already Absolutely. Well what what I, I think is you got the player at the top. Underneath the player and the economics of sports and football, you've got sponsors, you've got stadiums, you've got uh, football gear, you've got every part of the associated industries that are looking at that. As soon as that player is tainted and that club is tainted, the sponsors will walk away. And I, I will predict not only will the sponsors walk away in the first 24 hours, but in the following 48 hours, they'll come back and say, you ruined our brand. You, you should have been protecting the sport. Mm. Our, our, our company's name is on your shirt, and yet it's going. And so you're going to have a pyramid um, scheme where it's all going to completely collapse under it. And that's what's worrying me. You know, I love football. I absolutely love it. It's the global game, and it, we can't get the same global legislation that allow law enforcement to go across borders and make it heavy penalties. There are a lot of countries where, what, you get a slap on the wrist. So, Stuart, it's, uh, it's, reassure me, because I'm, I'm of the old school. Right, reassure me. I'm looking at a fixture list for the Premier League this coming weekend. Can I be 100% confident that nothing untoward has happened at those clubs? Nobody can be 100%. You don't know if for any player, any administrator, any coach, any, there's never a certainty because there is no global standard. There's not a lot of leagues that put a lot into sport integrity. There's not a lot of investigation. And it's a, such a confusing problem. Is it the league? Is it the club? Is it the, the police? Are the clubs um, themselves what, interested, Stuart? Are the clubs themselves interested in this? Are they, are they just saying, we, we don't want to know about it? Well, it's a good question because I actually think there's a few Premier League clubs, I won't name, that we've actually gone and talked to the youngsters, the people that are upcoming, the real people that are vulnerable. And it's those people that they're starting to actually give them a whole heap of things about how to prevent this. So. I'd have to say that a few of the clubs are, but it's such a big problem. If something lands in your club, who do you turn to? Do you give it to the police? How do you clean it up? Stuart, you've given all of us something else to think about once again, and uh, we thank you for your time. Uh, I, I know you come to see us here in Qatar often. Next time you're here, let me know. We'll continue this conversation. Thanks, Stuart. Love to. Thanks to you too for help keeping the game clean, and I appreciate it, your time. Thank, Thank you, you, Stuart. Thanks. It's actually quite frightening what he says, um, and, and and that doomsday scenario, Andy, that a league folds because yeah. it's been infiltrated to the degree that these guys can get in, um, it's extraordinary. and that football's being played in, in the manner that we saw in Belarus there. That's or hasn't been played. Frightening. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope we've given you something to think about. Enjoy your weekend sport. We'll see you back here same time, same place next weekend.